What's up, everybody? Welcome to Southern Hood Blogs. What are the top 10 best cities in the South when it comes to food? On this list, we're going to talk about the top 10 best cities for food in the South. Are you guys ready for this? Now, there are more than 10 cities in the South of the United States known for having good food. Therefore, there are some cities you might expect to be on this list that are not going to be on here. And I hope I don't make anybody mad. Diversity is important on this list. So if a town is known for one specific thing, they may not make the list. Many cities in the South are frankly overrated and they also did not make the list. Having a specific type of food, especially one unique to the city is very important and it does rank cities higher on this list of ours. So if your city has something special going on, it may rank very high on this list. The South has so many influences of Latin, French, and also barbecue. There's so much going on in the South. So which towns have the best food? If your town's not on the list and you think it needs to be on the list, let us know your comments below about why you think your town should have been on this list. And there's a few towns which you're expecting on this list that are not going to be on this list. And there's a few towns that are going to be a surprise. Like what, really? Yes, these towns are on the list. Are you guys ready to do this? The top 10 best towns for food in the South. And again, we're looking at metropolitan areas because to be honest and frank, a lot of these towns um, they have really good food in the outskirts. So we're looking at the whole metropolitan area. You guys ready for this? Let's do it. And before you start typing how you disagree with me and I have no idea what I'm talking about, keep in mind that food is a personal opinion. How else can you rate food? The only real qualification there is to knowing food is being obese. And I can say I am very qualified to make this list. Number 10 is Broward County. Yes, the Fort Lauderdale metropolitan area has incredible food. They have Haitian, African American, Cuban, Mexican, Bahamian, Jamaican. Just about every Caribbean island is represented very well in the Fort Lauderdale area. And along the beach, some of the best ice cream and pizza places you're going to find in the South. Broward County really has a great diversity of food and it's not just diverse, it's also very good. One of my favorite places in Broward County is Coco's Kitchen. This is in a little strip mall. It's so unassuming. It's actually a pretty hood little place and you would never expect this little hole in the wall restaurant where you take food for takeout behind some metal railings that their food would be so amazing but I definitely recommend it. We recently went there and due to COVID they were closed. It was very disappointing. Coco's Haitian food is what you're looking at in the right corner of the video. It's to go. It's awesome. It's Haitian food. Love Broward County. When it comes to food, number nine is Oxton, Texas. You would expect Austin, Texas to be on this list. Of course, you would probably expect it to be much higher than just number nine, but that's my personal opinion. The thing of Austin is that they are limited. Now, there are a lot of different restaurants. They have the Cuban, they have Colombian, and we looked at a lot of different nationalities to make sure that a city that ended up on this list had a lot to offer. Most other people would have probably put Austin, Texas as number one on their list. We got it at number nine. They do have a lot of different food. It's not just the meat and the barbecue that they're famous for. There's also a lot more going on. There's a lot of Latin food, not just Mexican. They have a lot of different types of Latin food. So well-deserved spot on their list, Ox. Why can't I say that? Austin, Texas. I know how to say this. I'm thinking about Australia today. That's probably why I keep trying to say Australia. <laughs> oh, the human brain is interesting. Number eight is Jacksonville, Florida. The Duval has some of the best food in the South. That pizza you're looking at there is made in Baldwin, Florida, which is part of the Jacksonville City, Duval County. And the person who made that pizza used to have a place in Baldwin that used to be called Everybody's Barbecue, I believe. Anyways, it was the best barbecue I've had in the South. And it's a real shame that they're not making barbecue anymore. They're making pizza. There are so many really good barbecue places in Jacksonville. It's almost impossible to get into it. But 
It doesn't just stop in barbecue. It expands into Latin food and all types of soul food and American food. Jacksonville really has a lot going for it. It's one of the best places in the South to get obese. Many neighborhood restaurants that have been around forever. Jacksonville is definitely the type of place where you should have no problem finding good food. There's a few really good Latino restaurants as well. And Jacksonville is getting an increasing Latino population. It used to be one of the cities in Florida that didn't really have Latinos. Latinos are coming in and they're bringing some amazing food with them to a food scene that is already incredible. Also, kind of outside of the Jacksonville area is St. Mary's, Georgia, where you can get some incredible seafood, some awesome seafood restaurants there. The entire metropolitan area really has it going on. Number seven is Louisville, Kentucky, known as Louisville to the locals. With over 10,000 Cubans, this city has many Cuban restaurants, so it's not just American food. They also have the East End around the Highlands neighborhood, Bardstown Road. This street is incredible, what they got going on with food there. It's one of the hippest, coolest places in the South to get food. It's a very underrated city when it comes to food. And what they're doing in the East End along Bardstown Road is really worth checking out. You have so many restaurants and they're all different. There's Asian restaurants, there's um, African restaurants, there's Cuban restaurants, there's Mexican restaurants. There is so much going on in Louisville, Kentucky. It is definitely one of the most underrated cities when it comes to how good their food is. So if you've never been to Louisville, Kentucky, or you've never thought about going to Louisville, Kentucky, the west end of the city doesn't have too many options near those the south side, other than a few nice African and Asian restaurants. But once you get into the east end, it's an awesome district, and it's a beautiful district as well. The Highlands neighborhood and the old Louisville neighborhoods are incredible neighborhoods. So if you really want to enjoy some good food and some awesome historical neighborhoods, I definitely recommend a visit to Louisville. The birthplace of Muhammad Ali, yes, in the West End. Going on to number six, Nashville, Tennessee. There is no way I could have made this list and not included Nashville. Nashville is one of the funnest, cleanest, fastest growing cities in the South, and their food game is on point, being in the heart of American South, where the food and the music and the culture, if you like live music, if you like a fun place where you can walk easily and really enjoy a downtown district, there's nothing better than Nashville. Amazing food, amazing people, amazing things to do. It really is one of the cleanest, nicest cities in the South that is competing with Atlanta if it hasn't already surpassed it in attractions and things to do, especially when it comes to clean, safe neighborhoods, areas where you can really enjoy food, culture, in the American South. With its cultural importance and location, it's one of the best cities to eat and enjoy. I definitely recommend putting Nashville on your list. Number five is Atlanta, but not just anywhere in Atlanta. Mi amigos, Taco Tuesday, the north side of Atlanta along Buford Highway has some of the bit. I mean, there's no other concentration in the United States and the South of amazing ethnic restaurants like what you're going to find in this area of Atlanta. It's on the northeast side of Atlanta and it goes through several city limits and stuff like that. Some of it's in Atlanta, some of it is in Doraville, whatever. Back along that highway heading northeast towards coming Georgia, that whole area has Asian, it has Latin, it has like every country, every nationality, every food you can think of is in there. There's a lot of restaurants along that highway and they're all good. A vast majority of these restaurants are incredible. Atlanta has Cuban, Atlanta has Mexican, Atlanta has Colombian. Atlanta has so much going for it, and they're all located in this area. Awesome area for food. Definitely recommend when you go to Atlanta that you check out the northeast side of town. I know Atlanta traffic and highways are a nightmare, but if you go to Atlanta and you really want to experience some really good food, I definitely recommend that you take the drive to the northeast side and check out this neighborhood and this area out here it's where all the good stuff is. Another great city for food in the south is Houston, Texas. Whether you're talking meat, steak houses, or simply awesome Latin food, and it's not just Mexican. Again, they have all of the food you'd want from Salvadorian to Cuban to Colombian. If they if if you want it, they have a Brazilian. This city has so much to offer when it comes to food. It's no wonder so many people in this city are overweight. Houston is predominantly known for their Mexican-American influences, 
and you will definitely notice it when you're in the town. They have some of the best Mexican food as expected. On the west side of town, really, on every side of town, but on the west side of town, there's a lot of really good restaurants and it expands all into the suburbs. If you want to eat amazing food, if you're in Houston, Texas, you'll have so many options. There's no way you could not find a place you're gonna love in Houston. They really are one of the best places in the South to get food. I know it's a little bit over, overlooked and underrated, but really, Houston, Texas, they got it going on. Number three is Tampa, Florida. The Cuban sandwich is the staple of Tampa's gifts to the world. And it's not so much that it's Cuban, it's probably more likely a mix of Italian with Cuban. According to many people I've spoke to in Tampa, this is Ybor City right here. It's a district in Tampa known for Cubans and Italians. Tampa was a city that was very diverse, not just recently, but from like the 1800s, they've had a great diversity of people mixing here in Tampa, Florida. Now there's many versions out there, but according to the locals that I've spoken to, the Cuban sandwich really carries the word Cuban because they use Cuban bread to make it. And it actually probably has more of an Italian influence than a Cuban influence. In fact, the, it, the Cuban sandwich is pretty much unheard of in most Cubans in Miami and most Cubans from Cuba. So the Cuban sandwich, while most people associate it with Cubans, is actually more likely to realistically depict Italian or Tampa culture more than Cuban culture. So... When you think about a Cuban sandwich, you automatically might think Cuban, but actually it's more of a Tampa thing than a Cuban thing, being much less popular in Miami and being much, uh, pretty much unheard of in Cuba other than at tourist places where they relate it to Cuban culture and then they put it on the menu because the tourists are expecting it, but it really doesn't belong there. You will notice all around the Tampa area, incredible Cuban sandwiches. They have food trucks. I mean, it's everywhere you go. And usually, the more hood the place looks, the better their Cuban sandwich. You got to risk your life if you want good stuff. Number two is Miami Ming. Now, if you didn't think Miami was going to be on this list, you were so wrong. And if you thought it was number one, you were also so wrong. I know a lot of people in Miami like, oh, I am Ming. You betray me, my brother. We should have been number one on this list, chico. Yes, yes, I get it. The thing about Miami is that it really lacks a little bit of diversity. It's got a little bit of everything. It really does. But it's so saturated with Cuban food. And, and trust me, it's number two on this list. It really deserves to be on this list. But there's another city that has a much more important significance in the culinary world. And we'll get to that in a minute. Number two is Miami. And I know it's going to hurt a lot of people's feelings that Miami isn't number one. Because Miami food scene is really incredible. The sheer number of amazing restaurants in Miami surpasses any other city in this list. The other city that won, won because they have better quality. It's where they really win is with the quality of their food. But talking about Miami, it has Little Havana, which is the district we're looking at here. Many people are a little bit afraid of this district and it's really unfair to the district because yes it, it is known for having a little bit higher crime because it's right in the heart of Miami and a lot of people shy away from Little Havana. Little Havana is one of the districts that you really got to visit and you might have to put up with a beggar or something like that but in the number one spot you're also going to have to deal with stuff like that so if you want good food like I said sometimes you just got to risk your life. While my adventures in the South have gone on, I've seen little places in the hood where I'm like, man, you know that barbecue is good. Will we get shot while standing outside waiting? We haven't got shot, but we've gone for the barbecue. So sometimes you just got to go for it. Miami, Little Havana, one of the most incredible districts when it comes to food. It represents Cuban, Salvadorian, Colombian, and it used to be mostly Cubans. It's starting to become Central Americans, so and now there's Nicaraguans. Now there's Salvadorians and Hondurians in here. And actually, it's not even that many Cubans anymore in this neighborhood. It's actually become Central American with Cubans moving into Hialeah, Candle, and other parts of the Miami metropolitan area. Nonetheless, the authentic Cuban restaurants are still there, and the food is definitely worth getting stabbed. I will admit that this district is a little scary. Even for me, I've been all over the place, and I've walked around here at night, and you will have homeless people, and you'll have people that'll follow you around and stuff like that so it's definitely 
one district where you really got to pay attention and be on alert. Definitely got to, you know, I got to keep it real, y'all. It is a scary district. Wynwood is another district in Miami that used to be really hood, and now they've kind of gentrified it, and it has a lot going on. So the Miami area has so much going for it when it comes to food that it definitely deserves its spot on the list. If you want to get some really authentic Cuban food and you don't want to risk your life, I would recommend going into Hialeah. It's a suburb just north of Miami that has about 200,000 people, and there's a place called Mariucci's that's really good. Um, and pretty much most of the Cuban restaurants there are amazing. So if you're a little bit intimidated with going into Little Havana, uh, I would say at least do it in the daytime or just go to Hialeah or to Kendall. Any of the nicer suburbs are going to have much safer environment if you're a little bit concerned with that. Not like the number one spot is any safer. Moving on to the number one spot, the only place that I've been to in the United States that is scarier than Miami is number one new orleans this city has some of the best food that you're going to find it is expensive however the french culinary influence makes the food here incredible and they do have cuban colombian mexican all the other restaurants that you would want nicaraguan salvadorian all that within the metropolitan area they do have a lot of diversity in their food it's not just the french cuisine but when it comes to the french cuisine their burgers, their steaks, there's nothing like it. They are absolutely the best culinary uh, influence in the South. There's the jambalaya, there's the poi boy shrimp. There's so much in this town. Their dessert game is incredible. I mean, the French influence in this town makes their food be the best of any city in the South. If you didn't see this one coming, you've been living underneath a rock or something. I gave a lot of cities that are a little bit more unconventional uh, more newer style restaurants i give a lot of cities that are newer in the food game an opportunity to end on this list but i have to have a real traditional southern city to be the number one for this list so i gave places like louisville and jacksonville an opportunity to get on this list places you probably wouldn't expect on this list i gave them the opportunity but really, when it comes to being the best, there's nothing like New Orleans. Every restaurant that we went to was incredible, and they were expensive. The Commander's Palace is said to be one of the best places to eat. However, the city is extremely dangerous, much more than Miami. Expect to be harassed by homeless people and beggars. And not only that, they're really good at it. They're professional, so have a $10 bill in your pocket. So when somebody makes you crack up so hard, you just have to give them those $10 that really earned it. So they're professional beggars in New Orleans. So be careful out there. It is a wild, crazy city and very dangerous. So keep yourself on alert when you go to New Orleans to have that really good food. Did I miss anybody? Memphis, Tennessee, who did I miss? You guys tell me what I could have put on this list. And we can always update this list in the future. Thank you guys so much, and I hope you like and subscribe.